Hello, and welcome to today's pharmacology revision session. This video focuses on pharmacodynamics, an essential topic for pharmacy and medical students and for those preparing for examinations such as PEBC, NAPLEX, GPHC, TCQR, and other professional qualifying exams. This video is a quiz-based revision session. The following are the instructions for the quiz. In this video, we will review 10 carefully selected multiple-choice questions that cover essential pharmacodynamic principles, including mechanisms of drug action, types of agonists and antagonists, DOS response analytics, and receptor dynamics. Each question comes with five options of which one option will be the correct answer. We'll provide detailed explanation for the correct answer as well as explanations for the incorrect options. As we go through each question, I encourage you to pause the video, reflect, and attempt to answer before listening to the explanation. Challenge yourself to maximize the learning experience. Now, let's dive into the quiz and enhance your knowledge of pharmacodynamics. Let's begin by analyzing the first question. Question 1. In pharmacodynamics, which of the following terms describes a drug that binds to a receptor but does not activate it, preventing other molecules from binding? Option A, agonist. Option B, antagonist. Option C, partial agonist. Option D, inverse agonist. Option E, competitive inhibitor. The correct answer is option B, antagonist. The explanation is as follows. An antagonist binds to a receptor without activating it effectively blocking other molecules from binding and triggering a response. This action is crucial for modulating receptor activity and inhibiting potentially harmful overactivation. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, agonist is incorrect because an agonist binds to and activates the receptor to produce a biological response. Option C, partial agonist is incorrect because it activates the receptor but with less efficacy than a full agonist. Option D, inverse agonist is incorrect as it binds to the receptor and induces an opposite effect, reducing its activity. Option E, competitive inhibitor is incorrect as it competes with agonists for binding but may still allow activation when bound. This question emphasizes the importance of understanding receptor binding and antagonistic modulation. Question 2 is as follows. Which of the following best describes the term therapeutic index in pharmacodynamics? Option A, the dose required to achieve half-maximal response. Option B, the ratio between the toxic dose and the therapeutic dose. Option C, the difference between the onset of action and duration of effect. Option D, the dose required to produce a maximal effect. Option E, the difference between ED50 and TD50. The correct answer is option B, the ratio between the toxic dose and the therapeutic dose. The explanation is as follows. The therapeutic index is a measure that compares a drug's toxic dose to its therapeutic dose, providing an indicator of the drug's safety margin. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, the dose required to achieve half-maximal response is incorrect as this defines ED50, not the therapeutic index. Option C which I is the difference between the onset of action and duration of effect is incorrect as this relates to the time course of drug action, not safety. Option D, the DOS required to produce a maximal effect is incorrect because this refers to the drug's efficacy, not safety. Option E, the difference between ED50 and TD50, is incorrect, though it relates to dose comparisons, it is not the correct definition of the therapeutic index. Understanding the therapeutic index is vital for assessing a drug's risk-to-benefit ratio. Question 3. A drug that increases the affinity of a receptor for its endogenous ligand is referred to as Option A. Agonist Option B. Allosteric Enhancer Option C. Partial Agonist Option D. Antagonist Option E. Inverse Agonist Correct answer is option B, allosteric enhancer. This is because it refers to a compound that binds to a receptor at a site different from the active site, enhancing the receptor's affinity for its endogenous ligand. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, agonist is incorrect, 
as an agonist directly activates the receptor but does not modify its affinity for an endogenous ligand. Option C, partial agonist is incorrect, as it only partially activates the receptor without changing the receptor's affinity. Option D, antagonist is incorrect, as it blocks receptor activation without influencing receptor affinity. Option E, inverse agonist is incorrect, as it reduces receptor activity by stabilizing an inactive state. This question highlights the understanding of allosteric modulation and receptor dynamics. Question 4, which of the following statements best describes tachyphylaxis in pharmacodynamics? Option A, a gradual decrease in response to a drug over time. Option B, a rapid decrease in response to a drug after initial doses. Option C, a sudden hypersensitivity reaction to a drug. Option D, a drug interaction where two drugs potentiate each other. Option E, development of resistance due to receptor desensitization. The correct answer is option B, a rapid decrease in response to a drug after initial doses. This is because tachyphylaxis describes a quick reduction in response due to receptor desensitization. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, a gradual decrease in response to a drug over time is incorrect, as this describes tolerance, which develops more slowly. Option C, a sudden hypersensitivity reaction to a drug is incorrect, as this describes an allergic or immune response. Option D, a drug interaction where two drugs potentiate each other is incorrect, as this describes synergism. Option E, development of resistance due to receptor desensitization is incorrect, as it is vague and does not specifically define tachyphylaxis. Recognizing tachyphylaxis is essential for managing drug efficacy over short treatment periods. Question 5, in the context of receptor types, what is the key characteristic of G-protein coupled receptors? Option A, they contain an ion channel as part of their structure. Option B, they directly phosphorylate intracellular proteins. Option C, they involve rapid cellular responses. Option D, they activate intracellular second messengers. Option E, they require direct interaction with DNA. The correct answer is option D, they activate intracellular second messengers, as G-protein-coupled receptors, GPCRs, function via secondary messengers like CAMP and IP3 to initiate cellular responses. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, they contain an ion channel as part of their structure is incorrect, as GPCRs do not form ion channels, this characteristic belongs to ion channel-linked receptors. Option B, they directly phosphorylate intracellular proteins is incorrect, as this is the function of receptor tyrosine kinases. Option C, they involve rapid cellular responses, partially correct but misleading, as the speed of response can vary. Option E, they require direct interaction with DNA is incorrect, as GPCRs do not interact with DNA directly, this is characteristic of nuclear receptors. Understanding GPCR signaling is crucial for comprehending complex cellular pathways. Question 6. Which of the following terms best describes a drug that produces its effects by binding to and stabilizing the inactive form of a receptor? Option A. Antagonist. Option B. Inverse agonist. Option C. Agonist. Option D. Partial agonist. Option E. Competitive inhibitor. The correct answer is option B, inverse agonist, because inverse agonists stabilize the inactive form of the receptor, reducing its activity. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, antagonist is incorrect, as it only blocks receptor activation without stabilizing an inactive state. Option C, agonist is incorrect, as it activates the receptor, leading to a biological response. Option D, partial agonist is incorrect as it partially activates the receptor without stabilizing an inactive state. Option E, competitive inhibitor is incorrect, as it competes with agonists for binding but does not stabilize the inactive receptor form. Understanding inverse agonism is important for comprehending drug actions that inhibit basal receptor activity. Question 7. Which type of drug interaction best explains the reduction in effectiveness of propranolol, a beta blocker, 
when it is co-administered with albuterol, a beta-agonist, for a patient with asthma. Option A, synergistic interaction. Option B, antagonistic interaction. Option C, additive interaction. Option D, potentiation. Option E, neutralization. The correct answer is option B, antagonistic interaction, as propranolol, a beta blocker, counteracts the bronchodilatory effects of albuterol, a beta agonist, reducing its effectiveness. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, synergistic interaction is incorrect, as this would enhance effects, not reduce them. Option C, additive interaction is incorrect, as this would imply combined effects without opposition. Option D, potentiation is incorrect, as this implies one drug enhances the effect of another. Option E, neutralization is incorrect, as this term lacks specific context for drug interactions. Understanding antagonistic interactions is critical for clinical practice, especially for asthma management. Question 8. A pharmacist is advising a patient on the use of a non-selective alpha-adrenergic agonist. Which side effect should the pharmacist warn the patient about? Option A. Hypotension. Option B. Bradycardia. Option C. Bronchodilation. Option D. Vasoconstriction. Option E. Increased risk of arrhythmia. The correct answer is option D, vasoconstriction, as non-selective alpha-adrenergic agonists generally induce vasoconstriction. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, hypotension is incorrect, as alpha agonists more commonly cause hypertension. Option B, bradycardia is incorrect, although a reflex bradycardia may occur, it is not a primary effect. Option C, bronchodilation is incorrect as this effect is related to beta-adrenergic agonists. Option E, increased risk of arrhythmia is incorrect, while possible, it is not the primary concern. Being aware of alpha agonist effects helps pharmacists manage patient counseling effectively. Question 9, scenario, a patient taking warfarin, an anticoagulant, is prescribed cimetidine, a drug known to inhibit CYP450 enzymes. What is the most likely pharmacodynamic outcome of this drug interaction? Option A, decreased anticoagulant effect. Option B, increased bleeding risk. Option C, reduced half-life of warfarin. Option D, decreased plasma concentration of warfarin. Option E, enhanced clot formation. The correct answer is option B, increased bleeding risk. This is because cimetidine inhibits CYP enzymes that metabolize warfarin, leading to higher warfarin concentrations and a greater risk of bleeding. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, decreased anticoagulant effect is incorrect, as inhibited metabolism would increase warfarin's effect. Option C, reduced half-life of warfarin is incorrect, as inhibition prolongs the half-life. Option D, decreased plasma concentration of warfarin is incorrect, as plasma levels increase with inhibited metabolism. Option E, enhanced clot formation is incorrect, as the opposite effect, increased bleeding, occurs. Recognizing CYP450 interactions is vital for managing anticoagulant therapy safely. Question 10, a diabetic patient on insulin therapy is prescribed propranolol for hypertension. Which of the following pharmacodynamic concerns is most relevant? Option A, increased insulin release. Option B, masking of hypoglycemic symptoms. Option C, enhanced glycogenolysis. Option D, increased heart rate. Option E, reduced insulin sensitivity. The correct answer is option B, masking of hypoglycemic symptoms, as propranolol can obscure typical hypoglycemic signs like tachycardia, putting the patient at risk. Let's take a look at the incorrect options. Option A, increased insulin release is incorrect, as propranolol does not enhance insulin release. Option C, enhanced glycogenolysis is incorrect, as beta blockers reduce glycogenolysis. Option D, increased heart rate is incorrect, as propranolol typically decreases heart rate. 
Option E, reduced insulin sensitivity is incorrect, as propranolol does not significantly affect insulin sensitivity. Understanding the clinical implications of beta blockers in diabetic patients is essential for safe treatment. Further tips for revision. As a form of recap, take note of the following four tips to help you tackle similar questions effectively. Read questions carefully for keywords such as accept or not to avoid misinterpretation. Identify the main pharmacodynamic principle being tested and focus on that aspect when selecting an answer. Link drug mechanisms to their clinical effects, which can help in understanding the rationale behind answers. Review case studies involving drug interactions to understand how different drug classes interact in the body. Conclusion And that wraps up our revision on pharmacodynamics. I hope you found this video helpful in preparing for your exams and reinforcing your understanding of how drugs interact with the body. For further reading, consider textbooks such as Katsung and Trevor's Basic and Clinical Pharmacology, Rang and Dale's Pharmacology, and refer to the BNF for practical guidance. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more content, and share it with your peers. Thank you for watching.